Okay, so I wanted to show you what I learned about uh, my exhaust manifold before I put it back on. So I pressure tested the exhaust manifold and no water ever went into these cylinders. Um, granted, I didn't do it in an extremely high pressure because all I did was hold my hand over this like this and then put a hose over here into this slot. So I had a hose over there and my hand over here like this and um, I just uh, held this as tight as I could and um, water started shooting everywhere. I sprayed, sprayed, back sprayed out of here. It was coming out of um, here. No, out of here. And it never came out of here, so. But it was coming out of here and it was coming out around my hand. So there was a fair amount of pressure and there's only soot in here only so you can see a little bit of maybe surface rust from sitting around a while but for the most part there's only soot in these cylinders so then I pressurized this I put a hose well I couldn't really pressurize it but I put a high pressure hose on on this on this fitting here which shot water down into here and it came out here and even though this is all cracked up at the end here this is actually made, it's painted um, copper, and um, there's only soot in here. No water ever came out of here, but plenty of water was coming out of these holes. Because what happens is there's a layer of water, there's two tubes in here, this inner tube and this outer tube. And you have raw seawater just pouring in here and here, and just pouring in here to cool the exhaust before it goes into a rubber hose, which starts right here. And this is what I learned, interesting. Behind this gasket, this connection here, um, it switches over to basically cast iron or some sort of cast and uh, steel or metal. And um, this is coolant. So what's in here is just coolant. There's no raw seawater in this at all. The raw seawater comes in here and here. It never comes, it never hits this. So anyway, that's interesting. Little tidbit I learned. I'm gonna go ahead and install this now. Luckily it's got all these nice holes. And gasket is on. Basically, it gets held on there by. Uh, it may fall off if I'm not careful, but I think it'll stay on there. I need my razor blade. Razor blade right here. Turn this off to make a nice flat surface. This is how I do it. Coming on. Some people like to use this brake clean. I don't know if it releases gunk or something, but. That's pretty flat. I'll use a little brake clean. There's some stuff up here, so. Guess that's the first step. Went in pretty easy. Let's try to simultaneously. Oh, and it looks like it needs to go over this dipstick. But now I see that it is. Oh, shoot. Shoot. This was the side that I didn't think would be a. These freeze plugs are not going to work. 
Look, I don't have the clearance. They're gonna hold this back. These freeze plugs aren't gonna work. So I can't even put this exhaust on until I either cut these down or figure out an alternative. The, that, that blows. All right, let me, let me figure this out. Okay, I got it on, sort of. I got one bolt holding it in right now, but there's the gasket, you can see that down there. Now you can see this freeze plug is just gonna go, it's gonna be fine. This freeze plug is gonna be my issue. It's gonna, it's right here. I was worried that it might be an issue. I didn't have the right freeze plug. This is an expansion plug, and now it's not going to go on because of the exhaust. I mean, the manifold, the exhaust manifold's not going to go on. It's pushing it back. Okay, all I did was reverse it. So the thread is in here now, and this is the back side of it. And then I tapped it in there really good. And since it's got the rubber bushing, the bushing came off a little. I don't know. I think that will work fine. These threads are just so finicky. Almost, almost feels like it caught. Oh, oh now I ripped my shirt. You can never have nice things. That's just, this is, I kind of like this shirt too. It's fine. It was starting to fit weird. You know, sometimes you think, it'd be the, Cool to be the type of person that had nice clothes all the time. It's never been in the cards for me. I'm either getting food on because I overeat or getting grease or yuck on them because I'm always doing some sort of project. So this is the cooling system, so I should be able to fill it up with coolant now once I get this tight and then that tight up there. Which is right about now. All you want is that finger tight. And then this one, finger tight. Alright, that's finger tight. That's finger tight. That's finger tight. All those lines are on. Oh crap. Alright, I need a clamp for here. I need to clamp these ones down. Clean up my tools before I start losing stuff again. Then I'll start clamping things down. Okay, so I got everything connected. I filled up the coolant system and I checked for leaks. And there was one leak right back here. You see it's still leaking out. And I'll tell you what happened. 
what happened was this piece, which was the piece that I was holding the engine up with, it must have been a little bit fragile because we have catastrophic failure. So I gotta try to find this piece. It's on the head somewhere. So after going onto the internet and trying to figure out where I could find one of these uh, coolant elbows, um, it appeared that they're not exactly the easiest things to come by. So um, I went with my handy dandy JB Weld trick, JB Weld, uh, which is a two part epoxy that hardens as hard as steel. I mean, that's what it, it says. Uh, our strongest epoxy ever. It's supposed to harden. Uh, this is the hardener. Epoxy steel hardener. So I've got a little on me here, but um, so anyway, I mixed it up. It's a two part, so you just put equal parts. You mix it up. I use these plastic knives and then I just uh, smothered it on the one side, pressed it down, and then just smothered it all around where the crack was. And I'll end up sanding this side down quite a bit, I think. But I'm not gonna be able to use a traditional gasket. I'm gonna have to use a high temperature or medium temperature probably another JB Weld product um, gasket maker. I'll just put it around there and hopefully that uh, does the trick. I should have read how long. So it says that it, uh, you just do equal parts, prepare a clean surface. I use this stop and chop bag. Um, squeeze equal parts. So I put a line here and a line, a line of epoxy here and a line of hardener right next to it. And mixed it all up. Apply with appropriate tool in an even coat. Weld the bead or extruding shape as needed. So I actually just caked it on the broken part and then squished the broken part down onto the, the, the bigger part. And then I caked it around the back sets in four to six hours cures in 15 to 24 hours allow four to six hours before handling and 15 hours before putting object back in use so gonna have to wait two days for this to fully harden so well, i'll wait the two days then i'll sand it down and i'll reinstall it with uh, some jb weld gasket because I'm not, I'm not going to be able to use the same gasket. And the cool thing about JB Weld gasket is even if I don't get this perfectly smooth, um, the JB Weld gasket actually fills in a non-smooth surface. And I think it will hold just fine, just with JB Weld. If it doesn't, I don't know what to do.